How do you wear a legacy? Described in British military writings as both warriors and gentlemen, Gurkhas carry legends spanning over 200 years. More than about what Gurkhas wear, this presentation is about wearing the idea of the Gurkha. The origin story goes, in the aftermath of the Anglo-Nepal War of 1814-1816, to despite winning victory, the British were so impressed by Nepali fighting skills that they decided it was better to have them as a friend rather than a foe. And so, the East India Company began recruiting Nepalis who pledged their loyalty to the British Crown, and these created military regiments called the Gurkhas, which continue to this day. Although the real story is a bit more complicated than that. The 200-year bond is something that is repeatedly emphasized. The Gurkhas went on to fight every major battle for the British Empire, including the World Wars. For a country that was never colonized, nor under any occupation in any war, both the loss and service left an indelible mark on the psyche of a nation. In 1947, after World War II and India's independence, a tripartite agreement was signed between the governments of Nepal, Britain and India, where the Gurkha armies were split to join either the Indian army as Gorkhas or the British army as Gurkhas. There are also white British men who served in the Gurkha forces as commanding officers, but they do not go through the same selection trial as Nepalis to join the brigade of Gurkhas. This presentation focuses on those who served as Nepali Gurkhas in the British Army, their sons, and current Gurkha soldiers in the UK. In Britain, Gurkhas were most recently visible in the public eye during Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's funeral. Amongst the grandeur of impressive military units on display, the British media also gave voice to Gurkhas on their service to the Crown. Stories of Gurkha service are also shared through citing examples of their Victoria Cross winners, recipients of the British Army's highest gallantry award. Images of these 13 Victoria Cross winners are very familiar amongst the Gurkha community, used on commemorative stamps, print media, and even prints for t-shirts. Further heroic feats of Gurkha exploits abound, including tales of their fierce reputation which were spun into propaganda for psychological warfare to instill fear amongst Argentinians to help the British win the Falklands War. Sectors of British and global media have also expressed admiration in different ways. It is these legends, as well as attractive salaries for a still impoverished nation, that attracts thousands of young men in Nepal to try out for extremely difficult selection trials each year, which are tougher than joining regular regiments in the British Army. On average, only between 2 to 4 percent of competitors are chosen. For example, Usually around 230 spots are given to an average of 17,000 competitors. Hopeful teenagers may train for months and even years at recruitment centers. Many of the recruitment procedures continue the same way as it has been done for generations. Once taken into the Brigade of Gurkhas in the British Army, the new recruits wear very similar uniforms as have other Gurkhas before them, some updated with new materials. One of the recurring images is the symbol of the Kukuri, a large knife with a curved blade. The myth of the iconic Kukuri still prevails, where many still believe that a Gurkha's Kukuri, once drawn, cannot go back into its sheath unless it draws blood. In the meantime, documentaries and ad campaigns feature real-life contemporary Gurkha heroes. The inside story of my incredible adventures. I joined the British Army through the Gurkhas. The military make me more resilient, more stronger. Yeah, I absolutely love my job. In 2010, I was deployed to Afghanistan. We are very proud to do that. 
So I just uh, dare and give my best. Suddenly went bang. It's time for soldiers. They dressed uh, the soldiers and just give them a confidence. It's been super hard to find the right clothes. This is my second life. I'm here to make a difference. I'm survived to make a difference. Admiration is further circulated, such as those in the mix of online content from social media, video games, and advertisements. I have to kill some of them. Good lad! His efforts. Sometimes, the ways in which the name Gurkha is used for what it symbolizes can be quite bizarre and even insulting. Gurkha it is that prevails. Now, they've always thought this is a top class animal. He had the brilliance, he has the pedigree, and he's got the looks and action to match. You can also ride a Gurkha Force Jeep. However, some Gurkhas prefer to ride bikes, such as this former Gurkha soldier who has now moved on to work for the British Army. Mopeds and motorbikes are very common in Nepal and also highly popular amongst British Nepali youth. These pictures are predominantly of the children of Gurkhas living around southeast England and make us think about vehicles as accessories in menswear. More classical accessories inspired by Gurkhas are designed by this U.S. luxury leather goods brand. We were inspired by the spirit of the Gurkhas, so this idea of fearlessness and adventure and bravery. To a degree, always the same. Nothing changes him in the face of all the adversity. They can be beat up, they can be dragged around the world, uh, but are always absolutely beautiful and almost beautified by sort of this rugged experience that they're taken through. Today, the Gurkha trouser has been rising as an evolving style across the globe by designers who are neither Nepali nor Gurkha. This brand from Singapore designs both jackets and trousers. Here is a young fashion student's designs who used the Gurkha Museum's archives for his collection. British sports brand Kukri borrows the name from the iconic Gurkha accessory, the Kukri. Aside from the name, its designs have no visual iconography or styles associated with Gurkhas. Gurkhas have also been used for branding in another menswear luxury accessory of sorts. This, it continues the sort of objectification and commodification of Gurkha identity by non-Nepalis that tend to glamorize colonization. The founder states, the idea of the officers' club was to provide a grand atmosphere abroad to keep the traditions of the empire alive in foreign countries. I wanted to make an opulent cigar that would have fit right into one of those officers' clubs. The founder was later kicked out from his CEO position for alleged racist comments over Black Lives Matter. The BLM protests of 2020 made a big impact on young children of Gurkhas in Britain. Due to their ethnic ambiguity, Nepalis also became victims of racism, targeting East and Southeast Asians, heightened at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. The following year, in 2021, many British Nepalis began circulating a new social justice campaign using slogans inspired by BLM, such as Gurkha Lives Matter. It was the culmination of 32 years of campaigning by different Gurkha veteran groups these campaigns included a campaign in 2008 for all veterans to get the right to live in the UK, which was offered to Commonwealth soldiers, but not to them, and a hunger strike in 2013 over pensions. In 2021, after a series of a 24-hour hunger strike relay to commemorate the Victoria Cross winners by different veterans, wives and widows of Gurkhas, Two Gurkha veterans and a widow went on hunger strike opposite London's Downing Street to fast on to death. Uh, but your officers have taken away the awning under which these uh, old soldiers were afforded some protection. From oh, they have not eaten for How many days do you know that? And they did put tents up to try and protect themselves from the weather. Dan Guru, who is 60. I have family who've, who've, who've served in the Gurkha regiment. I have a massive amount of respect for the Gurkhas. Gurkha grievances goes beyond just pensions on matters of racism and human rights. The hunger strikes gathered supporters of all generations, but most notably veterans who came out dressed in their military medals and army accessories, reminding the public of their years of service. Veterans 
from other members of the British Army also attended the protests in solidarity. After 13 days of the elderly surviving solely on warm water, the hunger strikes were called off in August 2021. One year on, there has still not been one government-to-government -government talk on Gurkha grievances, and Gurkhas have been discussing to hold a third round of hunger strikes. This 76-year-old veteran finds comfort in knitting pieces, creating warm clothes that were not afforded to him during his turn in the 24-hour hunger strike relay. He ran away to join the Gurkhas, aged 14, and experienced the horrors of jungle warfare in Brunei, seeing friends killed and picking up dead bodies by the age of 17. He learned knitting from nurses as a way to pass months healing from a weapons injury, and became a young widower by the time he turned 24. He subsists on government benefits, as he is not eligible for pensions. He quit the army after eight years of service since he was refused permission to attend his own father's funeral. There are many more like him in the UK living in poverty. A little over a month after the hunger strikes, a new Gurkha memorial was unveiled in the heavily Nepali populated town of Aldershot, also known as the home of the British Army. Following this, a film was also finally released on the first Victoria Cross winner, Gulbir Thapa. This film was entirely funded by the local community and supporters, where everyone worked on the production for free and funds went towards the Gurkha Welfare Trust, a charity who works to support impoverished veterans in Nepal. Gurkha community members look to archives to recreate historical costumes and dress the ways the ancestors did, and children participated in social media campaigns to raise funds. Here are other explorations of Gurkha dress by the children of Gurkhas. Others use military icons to create designs and style themselves such as these young men in Aldershot, many who have joined the British Army. Children of Gurkhas explore menswear as designers, artists and models with clothing unrelated to Gurkhas, but they still use the idea of the Gurkha in other ways of expression, such as music, wearing clothes according to the aesthetics associated with British urban musical styles. This freedom to explore youth fashion styles was previously denied to Gurkhas until 1994 when as soldiers in Hong Kong in their 20s and early 30s, they plucked the courage to protest and create a list of eight requests regards pay and human rights. Among the requests was one to simply be allowed to wear jeans. Jeans and short sleeve shirts when off duty away from army premises. They also asked if they could be allowed to eat in more casual military clothes instead of the formal pressed long sleeve shirts, ties and trousers at the canteen during meal times. These dress requirements were not called for at all to their white counterparts in the British Army who served alongside them living in the same army camps. Here are some of the images of the soldiers of the 1982 army intake who were finally able to wear jeans on weekends away from the military base after 12 years of such restrictions. Today's Gurkha soldiers still have to dress formally outside their barracks on particular occasions such as this public interregimental football match. As we explore ways Gurkhas dress, we also have to take into account their ethnic backgrounds. Veterans take on multiple roles, as musicians and even shamans too, and they pass on specific ethnic heritage to their sons, who find innovative ways to use sacred symbols. Some veterans even dance dressed as women, which is specific to particular tribal customs, and was also a common mode of entertainment during army days. Younger Gurkhas and Gurkhas children also make visible queer identities whilst navigating gender expectations. As sons navigate new modes of style within Britain, their fathers can now proudly wear flowers in their hair, 
or flaunt genes without worrying about getting kicked out of the army. They teach the next generation to fight for social justice, value honor, duty, and discipline, and take pride in community service. They pass on cultural heritage belonging to both military and ethnic identities. Meanwhile, the worlds of fresh Gurkha recruits from Nepal collide with the diaspora youth who are their age but are now British. What kinds of future ancestors will this mixture of youth be? What kinds of legacies will they style? And in what ways will they too become warrior gentlemen?